Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and we're talking about a really important concept in math today, equivalent expressions, okay? Um, the problem says match each expression on the left to an equivalent expression on the right. Um, equivalent, we just mean equal. So basically, there's one of these expressions here on the left that's equivalent or equal to uh, one of these expressions on the right. They all match up with one or the other. So let's take a look at the first expression. The first expression says 3 plus 3 plus 3. And I know that you guys tend to go straight to simplifying, like, oh, that's 9. Well, you're right, it is 9, that's true, but notice I don't have any 9s on the other side. I'm looking for an equivalent expression. So one thing that I do want you guys to realize is that there is a shorter way of writing or talking about repeated addition. You know, if you're just adding up the same number, down there it was 3s, but I'll demonstrate with 5s, over and over and over again, yes, you could write 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, or you could shortcut talk about how many times you added 5. You added 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times in this case. So that would be the same as 5 times 8. Similarly, you can see I have the same thing going on here. I have the number 3 adding 3 times. So another way to think about 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 3 times 3. Number or letter A, I should say, matches with number 4. 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9, and 3 times 3 is 9. Um, so even if you weren't sure about that repeated addition, uh, being the same as multiplication, you could just simplify the two and make sure they both come out the same. And they do. They both come to 9. So definitely equivalent. Let's look at the next one. The next expression doesn't feature repeated addition. It features repeated multiplication. This is 3 times 3 times 3. And if you've been studying for the GED any length of time, I hope you know that we also have a shortcut operation to talk about repeated multiplication. So repeated addition, like we did here, could be rewritten as multiplication. But repeated multiplication, when you have the same number multiplying over and over again, can be rewritten using what we call exponents. Take whatever no number is multiplying, in this case it's the number 3, and then count how many times it's multiplying by itself. It's multiplying once, twice, three times. Three threes multiplying can be rewritten as 3 to the third power. 3 to the third power. And so b is the same as 1. Those are equivalent expressions. Again, if you didn't believe me, you could do the math. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 again would give me 27, and if I took 3 and raised it to the third power in my TI or anywhere else, I would also get 27. Those two expressions do check. Okay, wonderful. Now let's take a look at C. C is a little trickier, it's a little weirder, but I really want to talk about what's happening here. So let me erase my side work to give myself some room because I need some space to chit chat about C. Okay. First I'm going to read it. This says 3 times the quantity, that's what you say when there's those parentheses there, times the quantity of 3 plus 1. So I know it's timesing because this 3 is just shoved up against that parentheses with nothing else going on. So, But the parentheses tell me that that 3 is not just multiplying by one number, but it's multiplying by this entire sum. This entire sum of 3 plus 1 is happening three times. Another way you can think about that and this is related back to problem A here, if something's happening three times, that means it's adding three times. So you could just say, well, that's the same as taking three plus one three times. So there's one three plus one, and to that I'll add another three plus one, and another three plus one. That is three plus one th three times, three times three plus one. So two different ways to think about this, and you can see that C then matches with three. And if you really didn't believe me, you sure could do the simplifying. So let's do the simplifying just to make sure I'm not a liar. So let's try simplifying that expression on the left. 
3 times 3 plus 1. Well, if I follow the order of operations, uh, it says to work inside of groupings first, so I'll do that. 3 plus 1 is 4. Now I still need my parentheses because I haven't done the multiplication yet. I still need my 3 because I haven't multiplied by 3 yet. And 3 times 4 is 12. That one came to 12. Now let's check the expression on the right to see if it really does come to 12. Um, so I have, where am I going to write this down? Let's try it right here. 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 1. Well, I can go inside the groupings again. 3 plus 1, 3 plus 1, and 3 plus 1 all come to 4. So I used up that, that, and that, but I haven't dealt with my adding yet. 4 plus 4 is 8, plus another 4 is 12. And we can see that even if we didn't understand the how to flip back and forth quickly between these two expressions, they sure do simplify to the same answer. So C is 3, so that just leaves D to be 4, but let's just chit chat about it real quickly. So looking at the expression, uh, I'm sorry, not D to be 4, but D to be 2, sorry. Uh, but looking at the expression here on the left, uh, 3 plus 1 squared, again, let's remember what exponents mean. Exponents are another way to think about repeated multiplication. Notice how this exponent is outside of this parentheses. That means that that square is working on this whole thing. That means that this is the same as this whole thing multiplying by itself two times. This is the whole 3 plus 1 multiplying two times. And how do I know it's multiplying? Because I just shoved the two parentheses together. There's nothing in between them. So 3 plus 1 times 3 plus 1. And so it does make sense that D matches up with 2. But once again, just because students don't see it quite as easily as I do, let's just simplify the, both the one on the left and the one on the right to make sure they really do come out to the same thing. So let's try this one first, 3 plus 1 squared. Now according to the order of operations, I should work within my grouping first. So 3 plus 1 is 4. And I haven't yet squared it, so I'll drop my little floating uh, power of 2 down, my little exponent. And 4 squared means the same as 4 times itself. 4 squared or 4 times 4 is 16. Now let's check that against uh, number 2. Do they really come to the same thing? They look so different. Could they possibly? Let's give it a try. Okay, order of operations says to start within groupings first. 3 plus 1 is 4. 3 plus 1 is 4. Now what are these two groupings doing? See how they were just shoved against each other with only parentheses, they are still multiplying. I'll enclose one of those fours at least in parentheses so I can see that multiplication. And four times four is 16. And it did indeed check, even though it was two different ways, it was two different ways to the same number. Okay, so we have our answers here. I will just reiterate that A was four, B matched with one, C matched with three, and D matched with 2. Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it.